In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the variable valve timing seal on the valve cover on this Ford F350 with the 6.2 liter engine. To do this, we do have to remove the valve covers, so I recommend doing an entire valve cover gasket set at that point. Let's get started. Because the procedure is exactly the same on both sides, I'm just going to show you this side, but of course you would apply the same to the other side. To make things easier on this side, because the intake snorkel is in the way, I recommend removing it. You may not have to, but it will make things a whole lot easier. So remove the coolant overflow tank hose that runs across it and loosen up the two eight millimeter headed clamps on each side so you can pull the snorkel off. Set that aside. Now we have a lot more space to work with. Let's start removing items that run across the valve cover. This breather tube being one of them, press on this little tab, the gray tab and twist it, and then pull this up. Take it off the PCV valve. To make it easier, I'm gonna remove it off the top as well. Same thing, the clip is just on the back side. Let's unplug and unclip all of the spark plug wires. We can leave the retainers here, but if we open them up, that'll release the wires. Let's unclip the wiring harness that runs across the top. This is the harness that feeds the ignition coils and the injectors as well as the variable valve timing solenoid at the front. You don't have to disconnect any of these up here, just push it up and out of the way. Now on the front here, let's unplug the VVT solenoid. Sometimes a pocket screwdriver can come in handy for that, just so you can press on the tab, pull it up. And we have two more retainers for this wiring harness. Just pull them up and out. Use a trim tool if needed. Push the harness around the valve cover on the front of the head. And now use an eight millimeter socket, remove all the bolts that go around this entire valve cover so we can pull it off. If you can reach some of these through the fender liner, that's perfect. Go ahead and sneak your hand up in there and get them out from there. Okay, last one is gonna be the hardest one all the way back there. If you can push the fender liner up out of the way enough, you should be able to get to it. Well, that's all the bolts. All we need to do is pry up on the valve cover and remove it from the top of the engine. I like to tip it out like this so that all the debris can fall off and not go inside the engine. And there's the valve cover. Now all we have to do is clean the circumference of the head where the valve cover gasket goes. I have corrosion built up and a lot of debris here. So what I'm going to do is actually gonna use a vacuum to pull any debris that might wanna fall in so that it doesn't fall in the engine. You could cover everything with some paper towels or rags, but it still could fall in. So that's why I wanna use the safest method so as I scrape with a razor blade or gasket scraper, I'm going to, of course, vacuum all the debris away. We have RTV here and here that we have to scrape off and reapply at the end. And just overall, you wanna get the surface as clean as you can to be able to seal it up. With the valve cover on the workbench, let's punch out the seal that goes around the VVT solenoid. You can use a screwdriver, pry bar, little punch, whatever you have 
go right on the edge and tap it down. I have the valve cover on a wooden bench so it's not going to get damaged. So just make sure you put it on a surface where it won't get damaged. Let's clean this area up. I have some debris and a little bit of corrosion at the top here. So I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper and just very gently scuff it up, clean it. That way the new seal can have an easier time dropping right in. Use a rag and clean out any debris that's still here. Take the new seal, make sure it's facing down, not up. Then just try to press it into position gently. I found that a 27 millimeter socket fits perfectly over the outside ridge of the seal. You want to press on the outer ridge, not in the center. And then I have a little extension just so I can hold it. With a rubber mallet, I'm going to gently tap it in until it's flush. There we go, that's flush, that's installed. Now I want to show you how to remove the grommets off of the bolts so that you can replace them. They come with the valve cover gasket kit and you should replace them. Simply pull up while wiggling. Now if this doesn't work, you might have to tap them from underneath with a rubber mallet or something, or you could pry up with a trim tool. And this is what you'll end up with. Sometimes they break, sometimes they're already broken. The easiest thing to do is to put them in a vise if you have one. If not, just hold them in your hand, but be careful and slice the old gasket with a razor blade and just remove it. At this point, if there is corrosion around here, clean it up. And put a tiny bit of silicone paste on here. This will make it so that this is coated and protected from rust and it'll allow the grommet to slide on a lot easier. And once you have it installed, all you need to do to get it on the valve cover again is just press it into place. And now repeat the same to all the other bolts. Now with this valve cover flipped over, let's remove the old gasket. Simply peel it off. And personally, I have quite a bit of cleanup to do. There's corrosion built up here and here, and I'm gonna scrape all of this off. And then of course, put some compressed air to it and clean it out. Typically it shouldn't be that bad. It should kind of just look like this where you might need to wipe it off with a rag and maybe use a quick wire brush on it. But I do have some serious corrosion in these spots. So I'm gonna make sure it's all cleaned up and ready to go. I'm going to take a rag and run it with a screwdriver through the groove that the valve cover gasket goes into. With everything cleaned up, I ran some brake parts cleaner across the entire inside of the valve cover just to rinse it all out, make sure that there's no debris stuck in there and dust, anything like that. And now I'm gonna take the valve cover gasket. You wanna make sure you have the appropriate side because they are side specific. If it doesn't fit, it's because it's the other one, so it goes backwards. Each valve cover gasket's gonna have this thicker area and that, well, two of them really, those need to line up with these two areas here and that's where the timing cover meets the rest of the head. We're gonna apply RTV on the head side, but that's where you're gonna line them up. One groove is gonna be a little bit wider, the other one a little bit narrower. That's how you know which one goes where. And now you just take the valve cover gasket and press it into position all the way around. And there we go, valve cover gasket is installed. Now on the surface of the head, let's put RTV here and here, just a little bit. You don't need a lot. You want just enough to cover the split between the timing cover and the head itself but you don't want too much because the gasket will squish it and it's gonna get inside the engine. Just a thin layer to make sure that there will not be any oil leaks. That's it. Take the valve cover, put it back on the engine. Make sure the gasket doesn't fall off when you bring it in. Line it up. Start a couple of these bolts in just so it can be held on. As you put this on, when it wobbles like this, that means it's not seated on the VVT solenoid. So press it, and there you have it. So now let's bottom all of these out. We want them snug, then we'll go around and torque them properly. Start with the center and work your way towards the outer ones. 
All you want to do is just squish that rubber a little bit. Now with everything snugged up, it's time to torque it down. The torque is 89 inch pounds for all of these valve cover bolts. There is a pattern or a sequence, I should say, to tightening these. You'll see it on the screen right now. And basically what it means is you start in the middle and go in a cross pattern one bolt at a time until you get to the outer bolts. It's as simple as that. So let's grab the torque wrench and once again, 89 inch pounds in a cross pattern. Okay, so this was the first pass. Everything is torqued, technically, but I will go around in a circle, double check them all. You'll notice that number eight on the sequence, which is the lower right-hand corner, as we're looking at it right now, I couldn't torque, and that's because I just can't fit a torque wrench down there. So I put a ratchet, snuck my hand up through the fender liner, just got it nice and snug. 89 inch pounds is very easily achievable with a small quarter inch ratchet. So just give it a little extra, about an eighth of a turn. That should be good. Okay, they're all torqued and double checked. Let's get the wiring harness back into position, starting down here, clip it and plug it into everywhere where it belongs. There, make sure everything clicks when it plugs in so that it can be locked in. I didn't unplug anything else on this wiring harness, but we do have to put the spark plug wires back. So unclip these retainers if they clipped on, and then we'll reattach the wires one at a time. And of course, make sure you get the right one plugged into the correct ignition coil. All right, those are all plugged in. Let's get this breather tube for the PCV reconnected, clip it onto the intake, and press it on to the valve cover. Let's get this intake snorkel back on, line it up with the resonator, push it in all the way, and then on the air box side, slide this over. There we go it didn't fall off. And now just tighten these two clamps until they're snug. All you need them to do is squish a little bit on the rubber. Don't over tighten them. They're very easy to strip out. That got snug. Give it a little extra. If you can't spin this, you're good to go. Nice and snug. Perfect. Clip this hose back onto its retainers. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.